Hi guys, good evening. Thank you all for joining us. As mentioned in the email I received earlier today, we kindly ask that you keep your microphone muted and make sure your cameras are turned off as well uh, throughout the lecture. Um, I have Karen Hoffman next to me, Dr. Karen Hoffman. Um, and this is her presentation. I'll let her take over from here. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. So um, tonight, we're starting right here with the slides. Uh, I'm going to talk about periodontal disease in cats and dogs, and I'll answer any questions at the end of the um, presentation. We're having a, a little slide thing here, one minute. So I'll talk while we're working on this. Um, I fell in love with doing dental work because it was a win-win situation. I would see pets that had been in pain, unrealized by the owners, now pain-free, acting differently, being very happy. And also then the owners were uh, very excited um, to see their pets acting differently. And I felt good about it too. So once you realize what's out there and you address it and change it, it makes such a difference in the life of the pets that you own and love so much. Okay, so my goals in this talk. Um, first, I wanna show you what can happen if you do not know about periodontal disease and you don't address it. Then I wanna teach you how to try and prevent it from getting to the point where there's nothing left to do but take the teeth. Continue talking. Yep. Okay. Lastly, cats don't read the textbooks and they have different problems than dogs. So we have to handle them a little bit differently. What dogs are at risk? There's definitely a hereditary component as most small dogs uh, get periodontal disease over large dogs. There are certain breeds, for example, the Greyhound and the Beagle that are prone to periodontal disease. Um, the little pug up in the corner with the pushed in face, any of those pushed in dogs get periodontal disease. And also dachshunds are notorious for it. This is just showing you, we have to deal with so many different conformations of the dog or cat's face. And there you have a the skeleton of a long muzzle and the skeleton of a shortened muzzle. And on the shortened skeleton, there's crowding of the teeth. And sometimes the teeth are actually sideways. Okay, so this is what a normal dog mouth should look like. You have the tooth, the gingiva is the pink tissue coming up to the, to the tooth. And on the left side, the entire enclosed gray thing is the tooth. Within it, where that red canal is where the nerve and the blood vessel lives. And then bone is holding that tooth in place, that yellowish material portraying bone, okay? And then the material that's red and beige along the tooth is the actual periodontal tissue. Okay, some of the next photos are pretty hard to see, but this is showing you different mouths that I've taken care of and what can actually happen. This poor dog had everything um, possibly bad go wrong except for a fracture. So you can see at the top tooth where it says bone loss, that couple of millimeters of brown material with the bubbles, that should be hidden under the mucosa. So there's been bone loss and now you can see it. The next one down, you can see that bright red, almost burgundy color gum, that is tissue laying against that infected material on that root, that brownish material. The next tooth down, right in the center, is some pus. 
And um, that is under the gum line frequently. And then this poor dog also has fur trapped in his teeth. And then his canine all the way at the bottom um, has a large amount of bone loss. Um, so a lot more of the actual tooth is showing. On the left, these are what we call the incisors. They're single rooted teeth. And you can see where the end of the white color is. All of that brownish discoloration is root. So the gingiva is far below the tooth. There's a lot of bone loss. And you can imagine those teeth are wiggly. On the next slide to the right of it, there the red line shows where those teeth actually are. And the blue line shows where the bone should be. So you can see the bone's completely gone on that uh, one tooth on the right side, the little one that's there by itself. And a lot of times these teeth don't fall out because a thick mineral coating is keeping them in place. Just another example on the far left, you can see that there's root exposure. You can see fur caught between roots of the tooth next to it. You should not be able to get in between the roots of a normal tooth. Down below, you see root loss. Um, you can see the gum around the upper canine on the top right, how irritated it is. Also, when we do these things, we find oral tumors sometimes. And on the left, that is a tumor inside this mouth. Um, you can also see from that viewpoint that on the inside of the mouth, there is also this thick mineral, this infected material, it encircles the entire tooth. And on the right side, you can see those teeth that are little that could just be plucked out with your fingers because of all the bone loss and um, the disease uh, around the uh, canine. And then the last gory one for right now is a picture of the thick mineral that is laid down. So it starts out like sticky bacteria and then they grow and grow and then they release materials that allows this mineral to form. And then under that, there's no air. So bacteria that don't need air to live start to grow and they cause really, really foul smells and they eat the bone away much faster. So now we'll talk about cats. And like I said, they're quite different, their problems than dogs. Okay, I have people coming in and they'll say, oh, you know, I've had cats my whole life, but there's something about this cat's breath. It's really, really bad. And unfortunately, when I hear that, I think about a problem called juvenile gingivitis. This is very red, irritated gums, usually on cats less than two years. It can be on a two month old kitten. And because of the inflammation, there's overgrowth of bacteria. And like I said, that bacteria can really make you know, a, a bad smell. So the owner notices the breath. They don't notice the red gums. The cat isn't acting any different. They have no idea that this is going on with their pet. Basically, what we do is do a professional cleaning, trim off any extra mucosa, if there is any, and have you have to do home care every day afterward. Um, it's really important to deal with this through two years of life so they don't progress and get another problem that is even worse and requires all of their teeth to be extracted. The other thing they get are called resorptive lesions. And if you're looking at that, you see on the left, the crown, it's white, and you see on the right, what looks like half a crown. That is true. That pink material is not the 
gingiva coming up on the tooth. Rather, it is a hole right into the pulp chamber and that hurts a lot. This is another example of one, very subtle looking around the canine. If you were to touch that with your finger or an object, your cat would start to chatter very badly. Even under anesthesia, they chatter. On the left hand, um, the, the tooth far to the left, you see there's just a little tip of a crown. And on the right hand side, you'll see that same tooth on a different um, side of the mouth. And you can see that the pink is in the middle of the crown. There's still a little um, root coming off each end, but well on its way to becoming just like the left. This is another example of on the right of an um, resorptive lesion. And again, that goes right into the nerve. So you can imagine the tooth, uh, the canine on the left slide, this is something else they get where their body tries to spit out their upper canines. And that black line is where the gum should be. But in reality, the bone has been taken back and more of the tooth is being extruded out. On the right side, you can see a severe form of this. Um, the bone becomes very infected and makes a rounded shape around the tooth. Um, you can tell that the fang on the right is lower than the fang on the left. You can also Imagine that if you were to touch those fangs, they would probably move a little bit. Unfortunately, nobody knows the cause of these resorptive lesions, but they are extremely common and there's no way of preventing them, which is the bad news. This shows you a normal cat mouth and you can see the nice pink color, how it's light pink along the line of the teeth. Um, and then we'll go here to the uh, canine, maxillary canines that are trying to be spit out. And you can see that it's big rounded bulging bone around it and blood down in the center and there's pus down there. This is an example of one of those young cats with the juvenile gingivitis. And you can see on that canine, that red irritated tissue, I'll need to trim that back a little so that it's normal tissue meeting just like that. You can see how flat it is next to it. And then we begin with the home cleaning to make sure that um, we can try to prevent this from becoming a worse problem. Lastly, cats do get thick mineral like dogs do too. But the key point with cats is that they will have direct exposure of their nerve. And if you don't know it and touch that area, it will hurt very badly, okay? And one way to assess if your cat is in pain and might have these lesions would be maybe to use a Q-tip to gently rub along um, the inside of the jaw on the teeth or even outside. Uh, I wouldn't put my finger in there because they would be likely to bite down um, just out of instinct. Okay, so the big question is, why don't we realize that our pets are in pain? Well, first of all, it's instinct. If you show that you're weak or ill, you can be kicked out of the pack, the predator notices you, you're the prey. Secondly, if you don't eat, you have two problems. You're in pain and you're hungry. And lastly, they don't know that if they show you they're in pain, you're gonna do something that's gonna fix it for them. So for all these reasons, you're not aware of this. Now, um, some signs of pain to look for tooth chattering. Again, with cats, 
running you know, your finger alongside the mouth. With dogs, once in a while, you'll just see them suddenly chatter like their lower jaw. Um, they tend, and the owners don't realize this, to start hiding, being a little distant. The owner always thinks, oh, they're just getting a little older. Um, dropping food, excess salivation. Again, loss of play behaviors. The owner forgets this, thinks they're just getting older. Same thing with sleeping. Um, anytime a pet goes to a food bowl and wants to eat and walks away, they're telling you they have oral pain. Uh, maybe your pet is only eating soft food now. They don't want the hard biscuits they used to get. And um, being head shy, like they anticipate pain if you start to get near their head. Now, this just happened last week. I had done a dental on this dog and taken out, I can't remember how many teeth. And the woman came in and she said such incredible things that we asked her if we could tape her and put her on this. So um, you'll hear firsthand what this client says. This is Bear. Bear had his teeth done two weeks ago with Dr. Hoffman. And how is Bear doing? Bear is doing great. It's such a huge difference from how he was before until after his dental surgery. You don't realize uh, how much it actually affects them. Uh, I noticed he started, uh, I never realized he stopped burying his food bowl until after his surgery was done. And you just don't realize the stuff that they stopped doing because they don't have the energy to do it. Um, yeah, he's a, he's a night and day difference. He, he's eating more than he ever has before, which is shocking to wow. me. Wow. Yes. Oh. And he's got his spunk back. Oh, that's so good. How quickly after the, the surgery did, did he start to become like that? Like uh, that? The day after his surgery is when he started eating so I couldn't keep him in food, which he never did before. Oh, wow. Um, the burning his food bowl was probably five or six days afterwards, wow. and the energy just came back really, really fast. I was super surprised. I wasn't oh, expecting that. Wow, that's so great to hear. He's like a little pup again. And yes, he is. Oh, yeah. Oh, good boy, Bear. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing. You're welcome. <laughs> Full disclosure. Bear is like a bear and wants to bite you. So he was actually given um, a pre-sedation medication before he came in for his recheck. So that's why he doesn't look so spry. But she was so impressed with all the different traits he was displaying that she had forgotten about and, and how well he was doing. Okay, this is another very common problem. Uh, we see it quite often on emergency, urgent care. Dog comes in because suddenly the owner wakes up and the face is swollen between the eye and the mouth. And that is because there is an infected tooth root that has caused that and that is extremely painful. On the left, that's an abscess tooth that has broken open the skin on the right is one that hasn't. If you treat these with antibiotics and pain medicine, the um, swelling will go away right away. They'll feel a lot better, but you have to get rid of whatever tooth is causing this because it will just come back again. Okay, um, we're gonna talk a little bit now about fracturing teeth and about radiographs. So on the left side, um, that is a jaw where the white bottom line is the jawbone. And you can see in the middle where there's like a, a scoop out of it. That's how fragile from infection around that root the bone is. It's probably less than a millimeter. So that's a jaw that's waiting to break because of such severe disease. On the top right, you can see I have my instrument under a little what we call slab fracture, which comes from biting down on something hard. And below that, if the slab is removed, you can see the little pink circle with 
direct exposure to the pulp. So slab fractures are very, very, very common. Okay, I wanna talk about radiographs because they're critical to helping your pet. Um, this is just showing you normal for right now. And what you notice is that, for example, let's look at the right one. The tooth has, and the biggest one has two roots. It goes down and up, down and up, crowns up there. You can see the um, grayer interior, which is that we call the root canal, which is where the pulp and the, um, you know, the nerve and blood vessel live. And so you have an idea of what it looks like. On the left side, you can also see how it goes up and goes around um, the canine, which is the big tooth on that side. Okay. On the left, this is really, really important. That is a dog, the top of a dog's mouth. It looks 100% normal. If that dog had come in and had his teeth cleaned and we did not take x-rays, that dog would have left, owner would have been happy, everything's great. The middle image is what was actually going on under the jawline. And as I showed you um, on the prior slide, the centers of those teeth, if you look to the far right, you can see how narrow it is. Then look at the four in the center. They're all widened, which means infection has gotten up into there. And those hours are pointing at a um, circle of gas. So you would have had your dog had anesthesia, spent money, thought you did the right thing, and your dog would have been leaving in just as much pain, which you didn't know about as he has been in. On the right side, again, is another good example. There's really fat widened canals, and then there are teeth with the narrow canal. So the widened canaled teeth are infected, and um, there is even a blackish circle around one of them, which is an abscess. Okay, this is a picture of the cats with the bone that comes out around the canine. And I told you that's infected bone. So it's all like, um, in this cat, it's the, the right canine. Um, the bone becomes pockmarked, it's, it's not solid and you can kind of see that. And you can see, that half of the root has been eaten away. This is a side picture of uh, the tooth like that. And again, if I'm drawing my line around my tooth, it becomes fuzzy and fades out and I can't tell where it is. More radiographs of bone loss. You can see um, on the left side, that tooth in the back, the, the caudal root was normal. The root in front of it had lost all of the bone supporting it, okay? And next to it, um, that tooth was also on the way to losing um, part of its root. And on the right side, the bone line is all the way down. All of those teeth, you would think, my God, I can just pull them out with my fingers. Showing you again um, a dog mouth at, on the left side, normal canal, normal canal, widened canal, normal, widened, normal. So those two teeth that have the widened canal are infected and need to be removed. On the right side is a great example of an abnormal canal width. This is um, a lower jaw of a canine. Um, a canine tooth on a canine patient. And you can see that moth-eaten holy bone between the lower canines. That's the dog's jaw. And that's what's happened to it because of not addressing the periodontal problems. On the left is a great um, example of gas around a root, which tells you actually all three of those roots have gas around them. But again, the tooth on the outside might look normal, but when you take the radiograph, you find something like this. And then on the right side, 
those resorptive lesions where the body is eating the tooth, you can see that that tooth has almost been completely dissolved. Um, the, you can't outline the roots anymore. And there's that little piece of crown on top. And believe me, that hurts until that crown goes away and that tissue heals up. Last but not least, another big problem um, that we can find is we always at our hospital count teeth when we get um, a dog or a cat into spay or neuter, because if you're missing a tooth, you have to have an x-ray to prove that it doesn't exist. This is an example where there's the single rooted tooth next to the canine, and that tooth is not visible above the gum line. So if you were looking at this dog, you would go, oh, there's the canine, the next tooth is that two-rooted tooth, but on the radiograph, there's the unerupted tooth. And the very bad part about that is they make cyst. That big gray circle is a cyst and the cyst gets bigger and bigger and ultimately will push out teeth, would push out that canine and it could get so big that it could cause the jaw to fracture. So anytime we're missing a tooth, we take a radiograph, we mark in the record that it's not present and we don't have to worry about it again. Okay, so what exactly does a quote unquote dental mean at Mount Laurel? Well, first of all, um, they come in on a pre-sedative medication to be less anxious and to make it easier to place an IV catheter. All of them get blood work to make sure, are their liver and kidneys functioning normally to work with the drugs? Can they clot properly? They get IV fluids. It supports the blood pressure. It also is a quick access for any drug we need to add. We're really, really um, stressing pain control. They get, um, a morphine type drug at the beginning, they get local anesthesia, they get a non-steroidal anti-inflammatory injection, and they go home with pain medications and anti-inflammatories. So we're all about making sure we control the pain. We have nurses trained in anesthesia and all they do is anesthesia with the surgical animals. They're not out you know, getting vaccines or restraining pets. And they are constantly monitoring. You get an anesthesia nurse with each pet and you can see there, there's the ECG. They're hooked up to a blood pressure cuff. We look at their oxygen saturation. We look at their carbon dioxide level. Um, we adjust fluids as needed for their blood pressure and we monitor their temperature to make sure they stay uh, warm. So there's a lot of dynamic interaction with anesthesia and your pet. We take radiographs and I told you, if you don't have radiographs taken, then um, there's no point in doing this procedure. Uh, after we have looked for any abnormality in the mouth, no tumors, no nothing, examined all the teeth, measured that there's no deep pockets on x-rays, everything looks great. Then we will clean and polish the teeth. And then lastly, um, most anesthetic deaths happen because somebody puts the pet back in a cage and walks away and doesn't go back and check on it and the pet gets cold. We actually keep all of our pets right with us in our treatment room and we have um, a recovery nurse who's constantly checking their temperature, making sure they're comfortable. Uh, if they are awake and wanna go out, takes them out, but they're not left alone and they're not unwatched. So I really wanna emphasize when people tell me they can get a dental for $400 down, done under, you know, down the block, that's fine. They are not doing what we're doing. So that's saying good work ain't cheap, cheap work ain't good is, is really pertinent. 
Now we're going to talk about another topic that um, is going to give me gray hair, not blue, uh, and that is cleaning teeth without anesthesia, which um, I know that you'll see on websites or this or that, oh, my dog gets his teeth cleaned and he doesn't need to go with anesthesia. Well, first of all, it, cre it makes the dog head shy when you do something like this. Secondly, they always say, oh, the dog's really relaxed, doesn't care. That's not true. How many dogs are gonna let you hold them wrapped up in a towel and stick a sharp instrument along their teeth? This shows you a tooth on the left before any cleaning is done. So we have the roots below, we have the crown up top, and we have the mineral, the plaque across the entire tooth. And you can see some of it's above, some of it's below. Now, this is what you get when you do dental cleanings without anesthesia. You think the tooth looks great. Oh my God, there's no disease anymore. It's beautiful. But in reality, you've left all that bad bacteria under the gum line to continue to eat the bone and ultimately lead to tooth loss. So when it's done properly, that's what your tooth will look like at the end. Okay, so just going back again to what a normal tooth looks like, um, your bone encasing it, your central canal with the nerve in um, vein. Okay, so um, we're gonna talk about the different stages of periodontal disease. So um, this is stage zero, there is none. And you can see that the gingiva is nice and pink. It lays flat against the tooth. And you can almost see, like we call it a stippling effect of the ginger, like it's a little shiny. It, if, I, I hope you can see that. Um, you can see the x-rays are completely normal. Everything here looks great. Um, and that's wonderful when we find that, but that is very uncommon. Okay, this is the next stage where we start to see um, normal radiographs, but there is some inflammation of the gingiva. So you can see that reddish material under the gum line, okay? Um, now, the next x-ray is an example of gingivitis and periodontal disease with um, stage one, where it needed a cleaning to get rid of all the disease under the gum line. And that, that tooth is now gonna be okay. The owner's gonna brush the teeth and everything will be fine. Going up to the next level, you can see on the left that the white bone dips down like a half triangle. There's some bone loss on the left side, some bone loss between the two teeth. Um, you can see the inflammation of the gingiva. Again, showing you what a normal x-ray looks like, okay? Because then we'll get into, oh, okay, there's an x-ray. There's a lot of bone loss around that root. And on the bottom, whoa, uh, we can see that it's abnormal. Um, on the top is a different picture with root exposure of a dog. You saw the one on the bottom left before. Uh, it's just more showing you more things. Um, and this is irreversible. Um, you, can't, you can't brush teeth and fix this. And then these are the ones that um, are the worst and I feel so bad. Uh, their breath actually smells like cigar when you walk in the room and they have such horrible thick chunks of material and pus under and infection, it's, it's just horrific. And um, those are actually the ones that I enjoy doing the most because it creates such a better standard of life for the pet. Okay, so brushing the teeth. Right there is very important where the arrow went. We don't wanna brush just the crowns. We wanna tilt the brush and brush the gum crown meeting, okay? So just going back and forth across the teeth is not gonna do anything. You have to tilt it and go where the tooth and the gum 
interact, okay? Um, soft toothbrushes, children's toothbrushes are great. You don't need to buy a pet toothbrush. Okay, what can we do? Again, brushing the teeth, and that is key to everything. That's the best thing you can do. Um, it's better than anything else, better than shoes. And then um, toothpaste can be used, not necessary. And you can see that brush down on the bottom on that model going where the gum and the tooth meet. And then what's really important with that is that it's the motion that makes the difference, okay? Do not use human toothpaste for dogs and cats. It will make them sick. Okay. Um, I love when people come in and they go, oh, well, I get the teeth brushed when he gets groomed. And I always say, well, if you only brush your teeth when you go to the hairdresser, imagine what your mouth would be like. It is useless. Um, don't spend money on it. Don't put your dog through it. Nothing is happening when that happens. Uh, you really need to do it more than three times a week to be effective. We don't have to worry about going on the inside of the teeth, just the outside. Um, you see that that person is not prying the mouth open, just keeping it closed and lifting the lip up. And we're brushing at the gum line. It is really important because I won't do anything that my dog doesn't like to get your dog or cat to look forward to brushing teeth, okay? So you really wanna make it, oh, this is fun time. All right, this is a really good YouTube video that all of the dog people should watch before they start trying to brush their dog's teeth, okay? And we also have one for um, cats, but this is the way you should go about it. Okay, now we're gonna give you an example of us brushing one of our technician's dogs, who's the sweetest dog in the world, teeth. Okay. So notice that A, it started with a tree, it ended with a tree. Um, the dog was licking at the brush because of the toothpaste, they liked the taste. Um, she was brushing with the angle and really it only takes a minute to do. We're not telling, you're not supposed to go and brush, oh, a minute this, you know, this lower left, a minute the upper left, et cetera, really just, 10 to 15 seconds on each bottom side, 10 to 15 on each top side, and 10 to 15 seconds on the up and down teeth. Okay, now that is the cat video for the cat people to watch before they start trying to brush their cat's teeth. And remember, if a cat has one of these resorptive lesions, you're not gonna be able to brush the teeth. So if you think you see something like that, um, don't start brushing until you have a veterinarian look at the mouth. Okay, there are 
dental diets that are made uh, to help um, brush like with fiber, a fiber matrix that helps to scrub the tooth uh, for pets out there. There are also um, dental chews um, that you see that are veterinary branded and out everywhere else. What you need um, with anything your dog eats is to make sure that they're not a big swallower. We don't want to have uh, a farm body. I'll go back to it. There you go. That dog swallowed a little ducky. So if you have a dog that will swallow a big chunk of bone, then um, that is absolutely not the type of dog chew your dog should chew, okay? So the, we want to have them increase their saliva to wash out all of the bad bacteria and debris. That, that saliva gets rid of all that junk. So if they just eat it and swallow it right away, it's not being effective at all. Okay, you can buy a water additive, healthy mouth, um, which you put in the water. I always caution people to have a water bowl out with it and without it to make sure there's no taste in it that our pets pick up um, and makes them not wanna drink water as cats do not drink enough water as it is. And then the other product is or or a zinc gel. We have that here. Um, all you do is put a drop on the inside of your cat or dog's mouth back where the lip, um, you know, in the back of the mouth under the lip and it spreads. That's once a day. It's very easy. These are all toys that are made that are safe for your dog to chew. If you um, look at the top right one, there's toothpaste in between the, the chews for him to chew on. Okay, raw hides, I would only, if I'm going to use it, only buy what's made in the United States. And again, it depends on the dog. Some dogs will chew slowly and will be able to get the benefit. And then you're able to take it away from them by distracting them and they won't get a farm body, but others won't. This is why we avoid those chew toys, no bones, antlers, hooves, nyla bones, the nyla bones they have out there for puppies and all. They're hard as rocks and they break the teeth all the time. Ice cubes. This is another thing I see. Unfortunately, your dog loves the tennis ball and runs with it all the time. Well, those teeth have basically, if you took a Brillo pad and scrubbed at the teeth for a long, long time, that's what they look like. Tennis balls have nylon in them and um, eventually it's gonna kill the tooth. So find a ball that doesn't have nylon on it when you wanna have a dog carry a ball around. There are dogs that just live for that. So basically the goal here is look at your pet. Does it have disease? Do I need to have a professional cleaning done first or Nothing's here yet, but I want to start so I don't get there. I'm going to start brushing. Watch the videos. That is so, so important. If you have a pet that absolutely won't allow brushing, then you can try the dental diets or you can try some of the chews. And also there's the gels and there's a spray, but I don't know any pet dog or cat that would like me to spray anything in their mouth. So ideally you do all of the above. And we also have a video on our uh, Mount Laurel website um, that you can also watch showing how to brush your teeth. Okay, that's everything I had to present. Uh, I'll look and see if there's any questions. None? Okay, great. Um, I hope I was clear then. Do we wanna, we'll give you guys a couple minutes. If anyone has any questions, um, just shoot it over um, now. We actually got one from Laura. She says, what happens when dogs chew ice? Okay, when dogs chew ice, the ice is harder than the enamel of their teeth. 
I didn't stress that the enamel of the dog's teeth is half the thickness of ours. And that's the hard, the hardest part of the tooth. So what happens is it hits the ice and the tooth can break instead of the ice. Okay. The, um, the cat video uh, is on YouTube that I showed in here, okay? Uh, that is the one, the dog, there's a YouTube video. There's a, you, there's a video on our website for the dog. And I think we have one for cat, but I, I'm not sure. Um, it may need to be updated a little bit, lengthened. Okay. Um, I know whimsies are some kind of treat. I'm not really sure what type. If you can bend it slightly, you know, so it's not really hard, like an antler, then you should be able to let your pet chew it. And also remember, if it's the kind of treat your dog's just going to swallow down, it's not going to do any good. It has to be something that they gnaw and gnaw and let saliva work. If you could get your dog to play with, oh, I forget you, the questions. The question is, what is the best type of ball to, to carry, to chew, whatever, is um, a lot of times just, you know, the firm plastic balls, like the Kong type material. Um, it's just that that nylon, which, you know, really is only on tennis balls, um, is what does the damage, not the ball itself. Okay, no, you shouldn't stimulate the gums. If there are no teeth or very few teeth there, um, the gum should be nice and pink. If they're not, if there's gingivitis, then I would recommend doing like the healthy mouth and the Aura Zinc gel. Um, if there's any teeth in there, uh, they probably are diseased. But the whole point of toothbrushing brushing teeth is to get between the gum and the tooth. Um, the end stage of not doing that is loss of the tooth, toothanasia. So if the tooth's gone, there's no point in brushing the mucosa. I was asked, are buffalo horns safe to chew? Again, try to bend it. I have a strong feeling they're very hard. And no, they wouldn't be safe to chew. And the, the problem comes down to that chewing is great because it does release saliva and keeps periodontal disease down. But on the other hand, it just takes that one time to break a tooth and then you're in the office with having to get the tooth pulled out, which is not inexpensive. And also if you lose the top tooth where it's fractured, you have to really pay attention to the bottom teeth because now they've, they've become more exposed to periodontal disease. So you may get away with it. You could get away with it the dog's whole life and that's great, but you just have to be aware of the consequences of what could happen if you give chews like that. Someone asked about the pig ears. I don't usually recommend giving pig's ears not so much from um, a tooth problem, but from what I usually hear is that it can cause gastrointestinal upset. And uh, I'm not sure how clean the facilities are that make these. So I have never given them to my dogs and I don't recommend them to my clients. It's usually if a dog has a crack or chip in the tooth, the vet did not seem like this was a problem. If your dog has a crack or a chip in a tooth, um, and your veterinarian didn't think it was a, that much of a problem, it's probably a very minor chip. So it's not a big slab like I showed you. There's no pulp exposure. Um, probably it's like, uh-oh, what am I giving my dog to chew so that I don't let them continue to chew this and make it a much bigger chip, which would then become a problem. So um, all the time we see teeth with little chips on the tip of the crowns and they are still very healthy. It's much more to say, hey, you're giving something that's causing your dog
to chip his teeth. My dog has always sucked on stuffed animals since he was a puppy. I do clean the stuffed animals, but would that cause bacteria in the mouth? No, that does not cause. The bacteria in the mouth is not from a stuffed toy or whatever. Um, it's just normal in, in everybody's mouth and in the dog and cats. And it's just that that bacteria doesn't get flushed out like us. We can gargle, we can floss, we brush. But with the dog and the cat, they don't do that. And that bacteria just starts to make mineral and go down deep and eat at the bone. My dog has been chewing a real bone with peanut butter five days a week for the past two years while I go to work. Didn't appear there was damage at his appointment in December. Can I put the peanut butter in something like a Kong chew? Absolutely, you could put the peanut butter in a Kong chew. Uh, make sure your dog wouldn't swallow the Kong. I know that they have uh, firmer Kongs. Um, again, I told you it's, hey, you may get away with giving hard treats for the life of the pet, but you may not. And you will end up having to, if you don't want your pet in pain, having to have the tooth removed. Um, the last question is, how about toys with fibers, something like a teddy bear? That if you had toys with fibers, like a teddy bear, that should be fine because they're not carrying it around with them everywhere all the time. The tennis ball dogs tend to just want to hold on to the tennis ball nonstop. Um, and, and that's what it is. If you have, if they played with the tennis ball, you threw it out there, they played with it, it was done. And then it was put away for another day. It wouldn't wear the teeth down. This is just constant gnawing, 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 gnawing at the teeth. That's it. That's the last question. Okay. I hope I answered everybody's questions. I hope you all have fun looking at your pet's mouths. I hope you all watch the videos and start brushing. And I wish I owned a toothbrush company. <laughs> have a great night.